Have you ever seen a seed? I mean, I mean, like really seeing a seed. Because I've carved out a second to concentrate on what it may take to see it germinate. How it's shoved into the earth, into obscurity, into the realm of the dead where the deceased and the forgotten are buried. The dirt. The place where everything grows but no one wants to be associated with. That's a place where Adam and Eve were carved out hands and bones and breastplates and chest and arms and knees. And the breath of God was breathed into dirt. A seed. Now, am I crazy, or does, the, does that life of a seed sound a little familiar? Because it sounds to me like the Christ life. John 15, where the root of Jesse, the vine, forever green, the preeminent plant, the pine, Jesus. In John 15, he delivers the formula for transformation. We'll call it um, seed germination. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you abide in me and I reside in you, you will bear much fruit. You will bear much fruit. You will bear much fruit before apart from me. If you depart from me, if you're not a part of me, Jelani, you can do nothing. Oh. So since the term abide for me sounds a bit obscure, I have to look at the Christ life like the life of a seed. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go deep. Beyond all the stubble, my insecurities and my iniquities into the rubble on my past pain and my inconsistencies into that dryness, man, that sort of soil you thought could never yield. But oh, after that, you get down to the fertile soil so saturated with his spirit that no matter the desert, no matter the wilderness, no matter the forest, no matter if there's no matter, germination. You see, that soil, that's the soil of the gardener, the Holy Father, the author. Yes, the Father, the constant botanist who nips at the bud, that which is dead, who deletes the serpent in me there crushing his head, who slashes the matter and all of the chatter that makes us unholy, unworthy, like we're untried, untrue, unkept, inept, which further proves in me there is nothing but in him. In the sower, here's what he'll do. We'll be undefiled, though abused, though affected, unmoved, unafraid, unscathed, unbound, though bruised. And unto him was given the power to prune. But if there's no fruit, how can he prune? And man, if there's no branch, then how can he cut? And how can he cut if there's no tree? And if we're not in the gardener's garden, then how could the gardener see that we're his seed? Here to grow. Born to die, twice to live, then be glorified across every black hole beyond space and time to a city so immaculate, so real and so accurate that if we do not now abide, how will we navigate around every jasper wall, through every golden alley, every crystalline hall? Well, the answer is, my friends, we won't. Because what if there's no map or no sun? No directions, no instructions, no one, no guides, just known ones who abide. Those empowered and guided by the Holy Spirit who kept their flesh at bay, never in dismay from all these distractions and preparations that have to be made, all these self-assigned assignments saying, oh, I have to get it done today. No, no hesitations, just streams and streams and streams and streams and streams of capitulations, surrender. But that's not me. For my soul has been longing to utter fresh groans which say, Stop, Martha. Stop. See Mary. 
for in me she's abiding, choosing the more excellent way. So grow seed, grow, go as deep as you can go, roots as wide as you can bear, for down there where no king would ever place his chair is the son whom sets free every last one of his co-heirs. So if I abide and let my heart be the throne upon which Jesus resides, this seed, though dead, will be known will be known. Thank you.